This presentation is for Chapter 3, Part 1, Income Statement and Statement of Stockholders' Equity. The Income Statement, also called the Statement of Earnings, presents revenues, expenses, net income, and earnings per share for an accounting period, generally a year or a quarter. The Statement of Stockholders' Equity is an important link between the balance sheet and the Income Statement. This statement documents the changes in the balance sheet equity accounts from one accounting period to the next. Annual reports include three years of income statements and stockholders' equity information. The income statement comes in two basic formats, the multiple step and the single step, with considerable variation in the degree of detail presented. For purposes of analysis, the multiple step format should be used because the multiple step format clearly segregates items on the income statement, including intermediate profit amounts that are integral to assessing a firm's performance. If the company presents income statement information in a single step or modified multiple step format, the user of the financial statement should redo the statement into multiple step format before analysis. The multiple step format provides several intermediate profit measures including gross profit, operating profit, and earnings before income tax prior to the amount of net earnings for the period. This is an illustration of a multiple step income statement for Sage Inc. for the years ending December 31, 2016, 2015, and 2014. Note the intermediate calculations of gross profit, operating profit, classification of other income and expenses, and earnings before income taxes before net earnings. The single step version of the income statement groups all items of revenue together, then deducts all categories of expense to arrive at a figure for net income. This is an illustration of a single step income statement for Sage Inc. for the years ending December 31, 2016, 2015, and 2014. Note that the intermediate steps that were shown in the multiple step format are missing in this illustration. Certain special items, if they occur during an accounting period, must be disclosed separately on an income statement regardless of the format. These are discontinued operations and extraordinary transactions. Most companies report comprehensive income, which is the change in equity of a company during a period from transactions other events and circumstances relating to non-owner sources. It includes all changes in equity during a period except those resulting from investments by owners and distributions to owners. Companies are required to report total comprehensive income in one of three ways. On the face of the income statement, in a separate statement of comprehensive income, or in its statement of stockholders' equity. Common size financial statements are a useful analytical tool to compare firms with different levels of sales or total assets. Facilitate internal or structural analysis of a firm, evaluate trends, and make industry comparisons. The common size income statement expresses each income statement item as a percentage of net sales. It shows the relative magnitude of various expenses relative to sales the profit percentages, gross profit, operating profit, and net profit margins, and the relative importance of other revenues and expenses. This is an illustration of the common size income statements for Sage Inc. for the years 2012 through 2016. Total sales revenue for each year of the three-year period is shown net of returns and allowances. A sales return is a cancellation of a sale, and a sales allowance is a deduction from the original sales invoice price. Sales are the major revenue source for most companies. Therefore, the trend of this figure is a key element in performance measurement. If a company's sales are increasing or decreasing, it is important to determine whether the change is a result of price, volume, or a combination of both. Are sales growing because the firm is increasing prices or because more units are being sold or both? 
it would seem that in general higher quality of earnings would be the product of both volume and price increases during inflation the firm would want to sell more units and keep prices increasing at least in line with the rate of inflation the reasons for sales growth or decline are covered in a firm's management discussion and analysis section of the annual or 10k report a related issue is whether sales are growing in real inflation adjusted as well as nominal as reported terms the change in sales in nominal terms can be readily calculated from the figures reported on the income statement an adjustment of the reported sales figures with the consumer price index cpi or some other measure of general inflation will enable the analyst to make a comparison of the changes in real and nominal terms for example if the cpis for 2015 and 2016 were 233.0 and 229.6 respectively the adjusted or real sales figure for 2015 for sage inc would be 155,266 dollars sales when adjusted for inflation still increased 38.9 percent from 2015 to 2016 but at a smaller rate the first expense deduction from sales is the cost to the seller of products or services sold to customers this expense is called cost of goods sold or cost of sales the amount of cost of goods sold for any accounting period will be affected by the cost flow assumption used to value inventory the LIFO method generally results in the matching of current costs with current revenues and therefore produces higher quality earnings than either first in first out or average cost the cost of goods sold percentage is the ratio of cost of goods sold and net sales it is an important relationship for profit determination because cost of goods sold is the largest expense item for many firms this is an illustration of the cost of goods sold percentage for sage inc for 2014 through 2016 the percentage increased between 2014 and 2015 the management discussion and analysis explained the reason was the lower prices on athletic footwear since then the firm has controlled costs more effectively and or has been able to pass along price increases to customers it is important to understand that changes in the cost of goods sold percentage can be related either, either to changes in sales prices or to changes in the amount of expenses this illustration shows that the cost of goods sold percentage decreased from year one to year two but not because of a change in the cost of goods sold but from the decrease in the sales price from ten dollars to eight dollars the cost to manufacture the item did not change between the two years but remained at four dollars per unit the decrease in the sales price was responsible for the lower gross profit in the second year the difference between net sales and cost of goods sold is called gross profit or gross margin gross profit is the first step of profit measurement on the multiple step income statement and is a key analytical tool in assessing a firm's operating performance the gross profit figure indicates how much profit the firm is generating after deducting the cost of products or services sold gross profit expressed as a percentage of net sales is the gross profit margin the gross profit margin and cost of goods sold percentage are complements of each other the two percentages always add to a hundred percent therefore the analysis of these ratios will be the same generally firms want to maintain the relationship between gross profit and sales or if possible increase gross profit margin in stable industries such as groceries one can expect to find the same gross profit margin from year to year because companies will raise prices proportionately as cost of goods sold increases in volatile industries such as high technology gross profit margin may increase or decrease significantly from year to year for example target had gross profit margins of 30 percent for the three years of 2011 12 and 13 whereas seagate technology had a 19.6 percent 31.4 percent and 27.5 percent gross profit margin respectively in the same three years 
The slide, this slide illustrates the gross profit margin for Sage Inc. for three, the three years of 2014, 2015, and 2016. Companies having more than one revenue source will show each revenue line separately and also show the corresponding cost of goods sold or cost of sales for each revenue source. This is an illustration of the calculation of different gross profit margins based on the two distinct revenue sources of food and tobacco sales. An analysis of the information shows that the overall decline in the gross profit margin from 2015 to 2016 was attributable to the decline in the gross profit for tobacco sales. By analyzing each revenue source individually, the analyst can better understand which divisions of a company are successful and which may be facing challenges. Operating expenses are areas over which management exercises discretion, and that can have a considerable impact on the firm's current and future profitability. Thus, it is important to track these accounts carefully in terms of trends, absolute amounts, relationships to sales, and relationship to industry competitors. Common operating expenses include selling and administrative expenses, advertising costs, depreciation and amortization, repairs and maintenance, and impairment charges. Selling and administrative expenses are those that relate to the sale of products or services and to the management of the business. They include such items as salaries, rent, insurance, utilities, supplies, and sometimes depreciation and advertising expense. Advertising costs are or should be a major expense in the budgets of companies in which marketing is an important element of success. It is a discretionary expense that was discussed in Chapter 1. This is an example of the calculation of advertising expense as a percentage of net sales for Sage Inc. for years 2014, 2015, and 2016. Sage spends from six to seven cents of every sales dollar for advertising as indicated by the ratio of advertising to net sales. Sage Inc. is a retail company, so this is a necessary expense for them. Lease payments include the cost associated with operating rentals of lease facilities for retail outlets. Note 3 to the financial statements for Sage Inc. explains the agreements that apply to the rental arrangements and presents a schedule of minimum annual rental commitments. Depreciation and amortization represent the cost of assets other than land that will benefit a business enterprise for more than one year. The cost is allocated over the asset service life rather than expensed in the year of purchase. Land is an exception to the rule because land is considered to have an unlimited useful life. The cost allocation is determined by the nature of the long-lived asset. Depreciation is used to allocate the cost of tangible fixed assets such as buildings, machinery, equipment, furniture and fixtures, and motor vehicles. Amortization is the process applied to capital leases, leasehold improvements, and the cost expiration of intangible assets such as patents, copyrights, trademarks, and franchises. The cost of acquiring and developing natural resources such as oil and gas, other minerals, and standing timber is allocated through depletion. This is an illustration of the calculation of the depreciation percentages for Sage Inc for the 2015 and 2016 years. The percentage of depreciation and amortization expense has decreased somewhat, possibly due to the fact that new assets were placed in service during 2016 for only part of the year, rendering less than a full year's depreciation and amortization. Repairs and maintenance are the annual cost of repairing and maintaining the firm's property, plant, and equipment. Similar to research and development and advertising and marketing expenses, inadequate allowance for repair and maintenance can impair the ongoing success of an organization. This category, like depreciation, should be evaluated in relation to the firm's investments in fixed assets. This illustration of the percentage of repairs and maintenance expense for Sage Inc. for 2015 and 2016 shows a decrease that could be the result of having newer fixed assets needing fewer repairs, or it could be a choice to delay repairs in order to increase operating profit in the short term. 
impairment charges are the expenses recognized to record a decline in value of a long-term asset. Impairment charges may occur in connection with goodwill, but can also be recognized when asset values of property, plant, and equipment decrease below book value. U.S. GAAP does not allow subsequent write-ups in value after impairment charges are made. However, under IFRS, reversal of impairment charges is allowed. This is the end of the presentation for Chapter 3, Part 1.